the people that are the closest to him, the people that know him the, the, the most, are the people that fear him the most. And the reason for that is that, you know, they're, they're aware of what his capabilities are. They're aware that he has no, no conscience about coming up behind somebody and shooting him in the back of the head, even though he's a friend of his. You know, he'll do that. And the people that are closest to him know that. And that's a lot of the way that he was able to control. Harry, we looked at it thinking, well, that that's he's saying he didn't do it. And we thought, well, wow, this doesn't help us because right in the middle of all this, he's saying he has no urge to kill people. But we heard something in there that there was another word in there. In the heart of St. Louis, Missouri, a story of deceit and darkness came to light. Here lived Dr. Glennon Engelman, a respected dentist, an American Army veteran, and a trusted professional in his community. His patients respected him and his colleagues admired his skill and dedication. As Engelman's dental practice thrived, a sinister double life began to take shape. He targeted individuals for financial gain, using his charm and intelligence to manipulate those around him. Accomplices, often swayed by Engelman's persuasive nature, found themselves entangled in his schemes. Engelman's descent manifested with this first major crime. The plan was deviously simple yet effective. He would orchestrate an accident, ensuring it appeared as nothing more than a tragic misfortune. Engelman, recognizing an opportunity, devised a cold-blooded plan. He persuaded Bullock to take out a life insurance policy. Once the policy was in place, Engelman orchestrated Bullock's murder to look like an accident. He lured Bullock to a secluded area on the pretense of a business opportunity. There. Engelman shot Bullock, staging the scene to resemble a tragic accident. By having his ex-wife named as the beneficiary of Bullock's life insurance policy, Engelman created a direct financial link to the payout without putting himself in the spotlight. The successful claim on the insurance policy following Bullock's death marked the beginning of Engelman's series of insurance-related murders. One such case was the murder of Peter Holm. Engelman convinced Holm's wife, with whom he was having an affair, to have her husband take out a large life insurance policy. Engelman then brutally killed Holm, staging it as a work-related accident. Where he was killed and outside of a hotel, and that there was prophylactics in his pocket, that perhaps the shooting was related to him visiting a prostitute. Perhaps the most chilling chapter in this tale, Engelman also orchestrated the murder of Arthur and Vernita Goosewell. He enticed their daughter-in-law Barbara into a romantic relationship and convinced her to have her parents insured. Engelman's approach was brutal and calculated. He shot Arthur Goosewell and then savagely beat Vernita to death. Seventeen months after the murder of Arthur and Vernita, Engelman struck again, this time killing Barbara's husband, Ronald Goosewell, who stood to inherit the Goosewell's lucrative oil business. The people that know him the, the, the most are the people that fear him the most. And the reason for that is that you know, they're, they're aware of what his capabilities are. They're aware that he has no, no conscience about coming up behind somebody and shooting him in the back of the head, even though he's a friend of his. You know, he'll do that. And the people that are closest to him know that. And that's a lot of the way that he was able to control. Engelman's execution was cold and ruthless, ensuring Barbara could claim the millions in life insurance she had taken out on her husband. Following Ronald's murder, Barbara collected approximately $340,000. In 1980, Sophie Marie Barrera, owner of South St. Louis Dental Laboratory, was found killed in a car bomb explosion. Engelman was later found guilty of conspiring to do this because he owed her over $14,000. He was convicted of this and other damages to a few more vehicles as a result of the said explosion. As time went on, the unraveling of Engelman's crimes began due to the discrepancies noted in the insurance claims and suspicious patterns surrounding his associates' deaths. Investigators piecing together the various murders gradually connected the dots leading to Engelman. Engelman was eventually arrested, bringing his reign of terror to an abrupt end. The actual reason for killing people was the fact that he, he enjoyed the game. He enjoyed killing people and he enjoyed getting away with it. He enjoyed planning it. He enjoyed carrying it out. Uh, he enjoyed uh, he particularly enjoyed getting over on the police and getting away with it for as long as he had. 
uh, he looked at it like it was a challenge, like it was a game for him. His trial revealed the shocking extent of his crimes and he was convicted on multiple counts of murder. The killer dentist's facade of respectability had crumbled, unveiling the monster beneath. His betrayal of trust and the heinous nature of his crimes shook the foundations of the neighborhoods he once served. His death in prison in 1999 marked the final chapter of his dark legacy. Thank you for watching. Drop your thoughts on this chilling story in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more daily true crime stories.